Hello and welcome to the 11th video of my series on getting started with AutoCAD. My name is Chris and in this video we're going to talk about dimension styles. This is going to spill over a little bit into other areas that we've already talked about, specifically text styles and annotative text. So just be aware that we're going to talk about these things again. I'm using AutoCAD 2015. If you're not using it, things are going to look different on your screen. So I'm going to start here by setting my units of measure. This is a brand spanking new drawing, so I'm going to set this to be architectural. And again, you can type units if you need more precision in how you how you address that, or you need to change your inch your uh, units of measure from inches to something else. Let's get started by creating a text style really quick. So we're going to go ahead and type style, and up comes our text style dialog. And I'm going to make a new annotative text style. This is going to be so we're going to base it off of that. It's going to be style one, that's fine. And you can see it's annotative. We've got this end on uh, architectural scale right there. We want it to be aerial. We want the paper text height to be 0 0.125, so an eighth of an inch. And all that is fine. So let's go ahead and close this. We've already applied it. Now that we have that text style created, we can use it in our dimension styles. So I'm going to go ahead and type dim style now. And this brings up the dimension style dialog. Alternatively, if you head over here on the uh, annotate tab in the ribbon, you can click this little arrow and it'll bring up the dim style dialog. We're going to make a new dimension style here. So we're going to click the new button and we're going to call it style one. And we're going to start with the standard. That's fine and leave it non annotative. Go ahead and click continue. And let's start here on the lines. Now these tabs are fairly self-explanatory, so if you do some digging, you'll, you'll generally find what it is you're looking for pretty quickly. That being said, I'm going to talk about a few things that are common pitfalls that really kind of jack things up when you're working with dimensions and dimension styles and will really frustrate you at first. So the first thing I want to show you is how to be able to change the size of these tick marks. And this is again under the lines option and this is the extend beyond dim lines section. So as we increase that, notice those extension lines uh, get bigger and smaller. And you can control those all the way down to nothing. So if you don't want to have those, you can turn them off. Everything else here has to do with line styles, line types, line weights. Uh, and you can you can do suppression, and all sorts of stuff. Let's head over to the symbols and arrows tab. And in here you can control how you want your arrowheads to, 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 to look or what kind of arrowheads you'd like to have. These can be custom uh, as well if you create it. It's called a custom block. We're going to talk about blocks again in another video. But if you create a custom block, you can set that to be your arrowhead style as well. And you can pick your size for all of that and, and uh, your dimension break, which is the space between there and there. So let's go ahead and head over to text. And this is where dimension styles and text styles really mesh. It's where they come together. And what we can do is we can pick a text style here. You notice we've got style one, that's the one we created, and we can use that in our dimension. Now, now if you remember, style one, our text style, style one, is an annotative text style, which means that it's going to scale with our annotative scale. This is our annotative scale down here. So as the scale changes, the text is going to also change size so that when we go to plot, that, that size will be reflected in our plot. So if we say that our text is going to be a quarter an eighth of an inch, which is what we set it to, it will print an eighth of an inch, regardless of what the scale is of the drawing. And AutoCAD can control all of that for you. This also lets you change how your text is aligned. This can be handy if you would need to have text that's more like that or like that. So let's go ahead and head over to the Fit tab. And this is the tab for determining how things jam together when you're working in tight spaces. It also lets you select whether or not your dimension style is annotative. And annotative dimensions function the same way that annotative text does. So your arrow heads will expand. Your tick marks will expand, your extensions will expand, the little gaps at the bottom of your dimensions will expand. Everything will will scale with your drawing. 
as your annotative scale changes. Heading over to primary units, this lets us select the unit of measurement that our dimensions are coming in on. Now you can see here these are coming in on decimal. We can change that to architectural if we want, and that comes in nice and clean. The rest of this is fairly self-explanatory as well. Heading over to alternate units, this lets us add a second set of units to our dimension. So if you're working on a, on a project that requires multiple sets of units, say inches and centimeters, you can set that here just by checking that box and in it comes. And again, you have most of the same options in alternate units that you have under primary units. The last tab here is our tolerances tab. And this is where, again, we set our tolerances. Our tolerances can be all sorts of different options here. You can have it be the same up and down. You can have it be deviated. You can have limits or you can have basic tolerances. And there's not a whole lot to, to talk about with tolerances. But once we now we've got that set up, let's go ahead and click OK and click Close. And let's zoom in here and draw a line. Let's say the line is one inch long. Here's our one inch long line, and we're going to dimension it. Now, given that the line is only one inch long, everything looks just fine. And the reason why it looks just fine is because we're drawing it one to one, which means if we were to plot this to paper, one inch in our model would be one inch on paper. And that's not optimal for drawing a house. That'd mean that if you're drawing a house, your house would print the same size as the actual house. So that's why we use scales or, or, or whatever your discipline is, be it piping or be it steel or be it um, whatever it is that you have in your drawing. Far be it for me to tell you what you're drawing. So let's go ahead and pick a scale here, and you'll notice nothing happens. So the question is, why is nothing happening here when we change our scale, right? And this would be fine if we were to plot one to one again, right? So let's type plot, and let's go ahead and say we want to use our previous plot, which happened to be a DWG to PDF, and an eighth inch scale, and we go and preview. And that's our plot. It's just this little speck in the middle of the page, right? You can't see anything. Um, and if we change it to a quarter inch, you know, we'll get the same the same problem. Oh, there's our issue. Let's see here. It's a slightly bigger spot in the middle of the page, but it's still just a spot in the middle of the page. And again, this is this is a combination of a couple things. First of all, is we're dimensioning something that's one inch long, right? So one inch on a quarter inch scale or an eighth inch scale is incredibly small. Although this looks just fine, we'll go to plot here. So what we need to do is we need to set this to be annotative so that as we change our annotative scale and we go to, to plot at different scales, our dimension styles, our dimensions adjust for those as well. Now, one inch isn't a very good way to be able to judge that. So let's go ahead and make another line here. Let's make it 120 inches long. And zoom extends on that line. And let's go ahead and drop our dimension in. Go ahead and click one point, click another point, and in it goes. And you'll notice that once again, this is just, we're working with tiny, tiny, tiny little things. And this is a function of our dimension style. So let's go ahead and modify the dimension style. I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Incidentally, if you don't erase this, when you go to modify your style, it's going to hang on to um, this non-annotative option here. So if you're getting that issue, change that no to a yes, that no to a yes, and it will fix your issue for you. So I'm going to type dim style, and up comes our dialog here, and I'm going to modify style one, and we're going to head over to fit and select that this is annotative, and click OK, and click OK again. Now when we go to add a dimension, pick one point, pick another point, you'll notice that comes in a heck of a lot bigger. And the reason is, again, because that's how big this has to be for this to show up at an eighth, of, for this text to show up at an eighth of an inch in, uh, in one eighth inch uh, scaling. So let's go ahead and do our plot preview here again. Let's do previous plot, change that to an eighth, preview it, and now you can see the text comes out a reasonable height. Again, that's going to plot at one eighth of an inch, period. 
because that's the annotative scale that we set for the text and because we set our dimension style to be annotative as well. And if we set this to be a quarter inch, right now it's not going to do anything because we don't have that annotative scale added to our dimension. Now I've got this little option down here turned on that will add annotative scales as you change the scale. You can see here what happens. We're going to switch to a quarter inch and notice that everything gets a little bit smaller. You also notice that when you select something, you've got a huge 10 and a smaller 10. And that's because you have the option of being able to modify the placement of your text in each different scale. So let's go ahead and do a plot preview on this again and look at that on a quarter inch scale. Actually, let's look on an eighth inch scale first. That's OK. We don't care. You'll see that the <laughs> Let's change from display to extents. There we go. Continue. You'll see the text comes in at an eighth of an inch on a, on a sheet of eight and a half by 11. And if we change our, our scale here to quarter inch, which is another scale that we added to our dimension style, or to our dimension rather, and we go to the preview option here, the text is the same height, it's the exact same height. And that's the purpose of annotative scaling, is to make sure that when you change scales, your text stays the same, or your arrows stay the same size, whatever, you, whatever you're working with. If you never change scale with your drawings, if your drawings are consistently at a single scale, you probably don't need annotative scaling. You could probably just get away with like a six inch font size and four inch arrowheads or whatever. But if you do deal with switching scales a lot, like at work, we work in a quarter inch as much as we can, but every once in a while, we have to do a sixteenth, a three sixteenths inch drawing, or a, uh, an eighth inch drawing, or if we're detailing, do a three to one or a half inch drawing. That can really be a nightmare when it comes to the text size and trying to be consistent with your drawings. So that's that's the reason why annotated text is there, and it's an incredibly powerful tool once you know how to use it. Getting into it can be a bit of a learning curve, but just keep at it. You'll you'll get better, things will get better, and once you kind of get the hang of it and understand how your annotative text and your annotative dimension function together, you're going to be set. So that's about it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and close that dialog there. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below, as always. If you thought this video was good, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you thought this video was life-changing, go ahead and subscribe and I'll give you more of them. And I will see you in the next video.